Mary Tamu's Mass is our present study. And if I could have a drum roll, please. Today's subject, Istar. You remember Istar. Her name is Easter. Easter is Estar. Just spelt different so dumb Christians won't understand. Yes, Easter is found in the Bible. But Easter is found as a Roman holiday, and the next verse tells us about God's holiday called the Passover. Now, we've been doing Tamu. And Tamu, we have, we have studied about him. We've had, we looked at who Tamu is. We looked at the Bible in Tamu, the resurrection of Tamu, where Tamu, what about Tamu, Adonis, when, morning, and now we're doing Esther. Amazing how Mary Tamu's Mass has now today, and has we've talked about this before, it's amazing how it has come to a star. Now, there are some people, and I true, and I, I make the mistake because I grew it. There's many people say we shouldn't say Roman Catholic Church or Catholic Church, and I believe in that. And I still apply church because, you know, that's what I grew up with, Roman Catholic. To the institute or assembly. So shall we also have, instead of saying... Easter, and that's in the Bible, we should say Esther. Now we have a whole series about Easter and Esther in disguise. And later on, as I work our webpage, our family webpage, we're going to put that in one whole category so you can get the whole thing. You're, and I call it the Easter and Christmas special. So Esther, Esther. Primary consort consort of the goddess Inanna. We talked about her, later known as Esther, and later to be known as Easter. Gilgamesh, Mesh, G-I-L-G-A-M-E-S-H, references Tammuz in Tablet 4 of the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is spelled as one of Esther's past lovers, who was turned into a lala bird, a l l a l u bird, with a broken wing. Can we get a bit? Oh. Hey, moves a dying and rising god falls in love with Esther. And then he becomes a broken winged bird. Do you know what birds are in reference to the Bible, Mark chapter 4? They're a reference to the devil. Oh. But you wouldn't know that unless you studied your Bible. The cult, the cult. I didn't say, listen, I'm not saying this. I've got the back of, and you can download this now on our webpage. Go to download page, and you can download the two pages I have of the references. Of the people who know what they're talking about and been given degrees what they're talking about and archaeology and all what they know to be known to be known about known. I lost my page. <laughs> oh, and in the end, it's coming up. So the cult, I didn't say that, they say that. You know, when we think of a cult, we think about one guy leading people astray and drinking Kool-Aid and, and locking himself up in a building with guns and armor and stuff like that and going against the government. It's true. But they say the occult of Istar and Tamu. Ooh. Istar and Tamu sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Did you get that? Mary Tamu's Mass and Happy Easter. You didn't know that, did you? 
Now, again, I was, before I was saved, I was a Roman Catholic. There are two great festivals in the Catholic Assembly. Easter and Tammuz Mass. I don't, okay, you want to say it right, you want me to put Christ back in, all right, Mary Antichrist Mass, how's that? Because Jesus Christ has nothing to do with the Mass. Though you drop the ass off because you're a sucker. Don't you come mad at me as a Baptist church and say, oh, uh, uh, you don't know the history that I have learned. Here is Esther and Tammuz, and we're going to get to Tammuz in Christmas later, Lord willing. And we're going to compare Tammuz with Jesus, and they're almost identical. So let's say Mary Tammuz Mass, or let's say Mary Antichrist Mass. And if you want to keep a pagan holiday, and you want, you want to get wood, hay, and stubble, or your Yule log at the Judgment Seat of Christ and your people that, that are in your church, go ahead. Free will. Liberty. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And serving the Lord doesn't have his star, doesn't have a star, doesn't have Tammuz. You don't like it? You think we're strict? No. After reading all this nonsense, the cult of Istar and Tammuz continued to thrive until the 11th century AD. Ooh, look at that, after Christ. And survived in parts of Mesopotamia as late as the 18th century. Ooh, pretty romantic family here, the Tammuz and Istar. Traditional Mesopotamian religion began to gradually decline between the 3rd and 5th centuries AD as the ethnic Assyrians converted to Christianity. So as Christ is coming into the Assyrian area, Esther and Tammuz are going bye-bye, except Baptist Church, where they bring it back. They bring back the Christmas tree of Jeremiah chapter 10, and we either completely ignore Jeremiah chapter 10, or we just come out right and say it's not a Christmas tree. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Deck the tree with gold and silver too. You must go out in the woods and cut it and carry it back to your living room. How can you read the Bible and be stupid? Da 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 da. Am I offending you? Maybe you're in the wrong. Maybe the Holy Spirit is saying, listen to him. Jeremiah had the same problem with Judah in his time. Oh, we're still going to bake the cakes, the queen of heaven. You need to go through all our series, all of them, to find out. The wet cloth series and Easter series and Christmas. We even got Santa Claus. We got a whole thing on Santa Claus. I'll be putting him online pretty soon. And we got Should a Christian Deserve Christmas series. Which I think that that may be one more than two. Never nonetheless, the cult of Estar and Tammuz managed to survive the parts of Upper Mesopotamia. The church father Jerome. Holy, holy, oh, baloney. Father, Germain, what's the Bible say? Thou shalt not call no man your father. We can't read the Bible. Sally, knock it off. Listen. If you can't read the Bible to say, call no man your father, and then Father Jerome, Somebody's wrong and it's not me. It's not the Bible. Church father, well that's what they say. Jerome records a later a letter dated 
to the year 395 A.D. Now listen, this is Jerome, and this is all quote. Quote, Bethlehem belonging now to us, the Catholic Church. Jewish land given to the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Judah and Benjamin. The Catholic Church now says Bethlehem belongs now to us. Was overshadowed by the grove of Tammuz. You know, you don't have to have any grove. But the Catholic Church has grove. That is to say, Adonis. Hey, we did Adonis. Go back and read about Adonis. And the cave where once the infant child cried. So they say, tradition. You don't know where that cave is. You don't even know it's a cave. That's all tradition of the Catholic Church you can take and throw in a garbage can like you found Vaticanus. Vaticanus and, and the tradition of the Catholic Church belongs in that garbage can. I don't know. Whoever dug it out, they, the garbage men didn't come quick enough. Somebody didn't bring the, grass out, the trash out and we got the nonsense today. The lover of Venus was laminated. Laminated. Not laminated with classic, but Christ. So the Catholic Church proclaims where they say the Christ infant child was. I don't believe it. I don't believe anything in the Catholic Church. But they're saying that spot that they chosen is a grove of Tamu. You mean the Christmas child where they say cried and was is the grove of Tamu's Mary Tamu's Mass? Da, 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 the very tradition of what the Catholics say about Mass morning, December 25th, comes from the birthplace of the grove of Tamu. In the Jewish land that the, that the Gentiles, the Italians, have proclaimed. You can take that <coughs> mass and you can celebrate the devil. I am not. Free will. Do what you will. Don't get mad at me. Get, at his, get mad at history. Get mad at church history. Get mad at the Bible. Get mad at the devil for fooling you. So, I'm end the quote. Now, here's some four facts that they say is a fact. I say it's baloney. And you can't have baloney in, in Israel because baloney is non kosher so. The same cave came layered to site of the church and the nativity. You go to the church and nativity in, Benj in Benjamin and a bunch of Catholics who wear their things on backwards and, and, and a bunch of... Uh, anti-God and anti-Christ represented will bring you to the church of nativity and I suppose you can find it on, on Google that same spot is the grove of Tamu when are you going to wake up Christian can't you smell the smoke of the wood hay and stubble yet the church of the nativity how many of you been to the Holy Land How many of you been to the Church of Nativity and go, Oh, ah. That's the very spot that the Catholic Church says is the Grove of Tamu. I don't care what the Catholic Church says where Jesus was. But their Church of Nativity is the same foundation of the Grove of Tamu. I'll believe that. More than I'll believe it, the Catholics say they know where Jesus died. Matter of fact, I've been told they'll bring you to the spot where Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. Hebrews says outside the gate. Da, 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 da. Study your Bible so you will not be made ashamed. Da, da. I'm going to get me some sound effects, you know. We'll go. I think, that, I think if Christians weren't fooled by this, Bible 
Well, I'm going to take off Bible. Born again Christians who are saved, names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and they're fooled by this. I, I one guy will come up to me. I uh, just just met him. Come up to me. I didn't say nothing. I, this was out of the blue. Or well, I just want to let you know I'm going to keep my Christmas tree. I didn't say nothing. I had a pastor of the church. He brought us over his house. Well, you know, we have a Christmas tree. Are you guilty? And I said to the pastor, I said, oh, it's a nice bell bush. People get guilty around me because I have the Bible, and I'm talking about pastors too. Now, I got the devil knocking at, no, I got the devil's come inside the door with Jesus. Jesus ain't knocking on the door. He's inside. I've got both the devil and Jesus in my life. The devil does not want me to read this, and Christ wants me to read it, and Christians, well, I like it. <laughs> Two Babylons and Babylon Mystery Babylon was what you and they're hard reading. Which is this Babylon Mystery Babylon? Is that Hyssop? Hyssop's book. That give you a headache. I had to study that. I got. I think I got a C or B. It's a headache, but it's a book that you have to read. A paragraph or two paragraphs three or four times it's hard reading but it's well worth a reading for a pastor of any church it would be good for some congregation the church historian if it is e u s e v i u s hey some people the other day i went somewhere for test stilly stilly how do you say that? Style it. Style it. And could, you know, I didn't get mad. As they call me Mr. Hayward. You know, we, there are some names that are just hard to pronounce. Eusebius, however, does not mention pagans having ever worshipped in a cave. Nor do any other early Christian writers. So one guy says, pagans. Are not there but he does not say the grove wasn't there Peter Welton w-e-l-t-e-n Peter Welton knows a lot more than I do I hope he's a saved man if he's still I don't even know he may not be alive but Peter Welton mr. Welton I'll be like mr. Hayward what can you tell me about Tamu uh, I can tell you about Tamus what I printed. Mr. Welton, what can you tell us about Tamus? Sit down, let me tell you. I am picking the brains of Peter Welton. And I, this is all fair use of copyright because I'm doing it for teaching. And I'm giving the credit to be credit to be due. And you can download this free of charge. I'm not charging anybody. Peter Welton has argued that the cave was never dedicated to Tammuz and that Jerome misinterpreted Christian mourning over the massacre of innocents as a pagan ritual over Tammuz's death. So, Peter's saying, okay, it's not, uh, yeah, Peter, uh, for a minute I was thinking Apostle Peter. Peter is saying, okay, there wasn't a grove there. But remember, have we talked about the morning? We do that. Yeah, we did. We just did the morning. Peter Welton says that place of the Church of Nativity is where they wept. The women came and wept for Tammuz and his death. That was the previous video, which they're going to be pretty soon. Hopefully today I can get it all on. Our website if not I'll work on it tonight after the church and tomorrow I'm gonna try to get the Eastern Christmas special I'm gonna try to get that all definitely hopefully Lord willing by Friday on our web page that's a lot of information so it's either a grove at Tammuz according to Jerome 
or Peter Welton, who knows what he's talking about, is the place where they wept for Tamu. Either or all, it's a it's a, it's an occult. Joan E. Taylor, J O A N E T A Y L O R. Somebody else who knows what she's talking about, give her the credit. Has countered this contention by arguing that Jerome, as an educated man, woo, could not have been so naive to mistake Christian mourning over massacre of innocents as a pagan ritual over Tamu. So Joan Tyrus says, Peter, Jerome was right. And we go back to Jerome, the church father, the grove. The grove. And let me look over here real quick. Let me bring up my Bible. Because I hate to do that, bring up the Bible. I didn't bring it up here, so I'll bring it up now. And all right, let's see what the Bible has to say about grove. Deuteronomy 1621. Deuteronomy 1621. Got my mouth. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto an altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make. And in Judges, he told uh, um, Gideon to cut down the grove his father made. And Judges chapter 6, Judges chapter 6. 1 Kings 15, 13, and Micah, his mother, even he... Even her he removed from being queen because she made an idol in a grove. Ahab made an made a grove. Oh, Ahab, he's trouble. There remained a grove that was in Samaria, you know, where the golden uh, uh, eat more chicken. I didn't say that. Did I say that? Come on, of all the animals, you gotta you gotta have a big cow. You don't know about the sacred cow, the holy cow. Sally, stop it. No, I'm not. I am going to make fun of these idiots who don't know what the Bible says. Paul says not to be ignorant. If you're going to be ignorant, I'm going to pick on your ignorance, and I will use sarcasm and humor to do it because those who do know the Bible, those who are who are known of God, got the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of God, look at it like Amen. The cult of Istar and Tamu still exists in Mardin, M A R D I N, as late as the eighteenth century. And the cult of Istar and Tammuz is still alive, as far as I know, in, if the Lord will oh, be still, in 2020, at least 2019, the cult of Tammuz and, and Istar was Happy Easter, Merry Tammuz Mass, or they say Merry Christmas. I don't say Merry Christmas, but that's what they call it. And when you bring Easter into the church and you bring that mass into your church, a, a Baptist church, you are celebrating the cult, they call it, of Easter and the cult of Tammuz. And the foundation of both of them, they, the, the, the scholars, the doctors, the PhDs, the writers say cult. Don't you dare go say style is calling what we do a cult. They are. Okay? Look at the names of the people. See the names? See them all? Look, see the names? Go that way. See the names? Print my sheet out. You can go on you can go on to my Facebook, which you're on right now watching it. You can find the link. I'll put the link back up of our web page. Right now, at this moment right now, the Easter and Christmas special is not ready yet. The website's not ready, but you can go to our download page and you can download Easter in Disguise and read it. Merry 
K moves Matt. And if, if you don't like it and you hate me for it, I'm not sorry. Because I'm giving you the truth and Paul says, have I become your enemy writing to Christians because I tell you the truth? If you're angry with me for giving you the truth that I stepped on your sore toe called a cult and Catholic in Babylonism, Babylonism it is your fault for, for your toe being injured and not coming to Christ to be healed. You need to, to repent of your sin for God to forgive you and to cleanse you. But let me rest assured, you be mad at me for all you want to be. It ain't going to do you no well. It ain't going to do me no well. But after you've heard these reports, after you heard the Lord giving me the insight to do what I do, Whether you choose, okay, I'm going to repent and get right, or I'm just going to keep on going because I like it, whatever reason, I'm going to keep celebrating this mess. You keep on celebrating and say, I got a free will, I can do whatever I want, you're full of it, you're a liar and all that. You're going to stand before God. And you're going to stand before God as a sinner. why I'm doing it. I want you to get out of the sin. I want you to do right. I want you to confess your sin. I want you. You know, many men I know, they're not going to get up before Christians and say, you know what? They know you don't have to give my name. Give the name of the Holy Spirit. It ain't Smiley Hayward. You know, I found this study about Easter and Christmas. And I heard this study and I even looked it up myself and I got that that Babylon mystery Babylon. I got the two Babylon. You know, I read that stuff and I looked it up on Google and all. I want to tell the congregation that before Jesus Christ my, and God, I have repented of this sin and we're not going to allow this sin anymore in this church. And let me tell you, we're going to spend the next few weeks, not more time, we're going to look at how wrong this is according to the Bible and according to the facts. Now, I know many people are involved in Christmas and Easter. You say, do you, do you hamper them? Do you, I don't pester them. I just do these videos. Now, if the Lord gives me a church, I will do stuff like this from the pulpit. Of my church. When I mean my church, I mean if the Lord gives me the church. I'm a member of a church right now. I wouldn't do this stuff right now. I wouldn't. It's not my place. But I got online. I have an internet ministry. I have Hayward Family Ministry that God's given me right now today. And I'm doing this stuff. Because I want you. To live right in the Lord. Now listen, I could be dead. Okay? Let me tell you, I'm gonna, I'll close. I got a few more minutes. Let me tell you, I, I could be dead right now. This year, 20, 2020, it's just not been, for many, it's not been well. On December 31st, last year, I had an ear infection that turned to a cyst that grew on my eardrum. I was given antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. I mean, doctors thought it was well. I'm not blaming nobody. And I went for surgery. They had to pop my ear out and work on that and reconstruct my eardrum. I don't have full hearing, but I do have hearing. Praise the Lord. It's not healed. It's going to take a long time. But it's, it's out of the danger phase. I got to go in October. I gotta get a hearing test and have them look at it. Make just make sure, just a follow up. A couple of weeks after that, I'm a diabetic, and the Lord's really shown me I, I gotta calm down my diabetes. I gotta take care of myself. This time, I'm taking it serious. This time, I've taken it serious other times, and I failed away. God finally turned that light bulb on and said, "Listen, it's now or never. You're dead." 
You're praying for, for a wife, and you're praying for a job. I can't give you that if you're dead. And I'm praying for the street ministry. I'm praying for a, fi a family Bible study in the park and all that. And God can't give it to me if I'm dead. So I got an infection on my toe. Being diabetes is very, very serious. Doctor told me, he says, you come in every day and you're going to get a shot. He says, the moment I tell you go to the emergency room, you're in trouble. I think that was about a week. And on Sunday morning, doctor said, no more shots. You're well. Got some cream until it clears up. I go in for the doctor's office the day before he tells me clear. He said, we ran blood test on you. I said, okay, what's anything? He goes, yeah. You got kidney failure. You need to go to a kidney doctor. Now listen. In 2010, on this day, my wife Lisa had just had her kidney report, had her kidney ports removed, and she was diagnosed as not needing dialysis anymore. On this day in 2010, uh, no, 2019, my wife Tracy is still and will still go through uh, uh, dialysis to late October. 2010, right now, this is September. My wife comes, up, comes off dialysis. She had breast cancer. She dies in September. September 2010. Tracy, 2019, last year, is on dialysis in October with my pastor and the social worker from uh, hospice. And then asking Tracy myself, she doesn't want to do dialysis anymore. I honor her wish. And on December 10th or 11th, she dies. Doctor tells me I have kidney failure. Well, guess what I'm thinking. He gives me an order to go get an ultrasound. I'm praying to the Lord for life. Because I want to serve. I, 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 got, I got a daughter I got to raise. I've got the street ministry. There are lost people out there because there's many Christians who are not out there witnessing. I got the street ministry. I want to still serve the Lord. I've got the Bible study. I've got two people that are growing in the Lord and they're just growing in the Lord and they're growing in the Lord. I want to go home, but not now. And I'm praying to God for life. I'm praying to God for finances. I'm praying to God for a wife. I want a wife. Above all things, I want a wife. I want to witness to the loss, and I want to help those that are saved. I want to serve God. But you got kidney failure. Get yourself to a kidney doctor. That's not good. So I'm trying to find kidney doctors and all that. I went yesterday for my ultrasound. And two or three hours later, I got a phone call from the doctor's office. The doctor wants to see you. I said, well, I'll come in. To my doctor, you don't have to make an appointment. I said, well, I'll come in tomorrow. I called him about, about four o'clock. I said, what time is your office closed? I want to come today. He said, we we'll close the last page at 5.15, right around the corner. I walk into the doctor's office, and I'm petrified. I mean, he said, he calls me and says, I want to see you now. I'm petrified. I'm scared. I'm going home. And I don't mean home here in Daytona Beach. I'm going home. And he said, we got the lab results. Well, actually, his nurse comes in. And I was like, can you take a peek for me? And she took a... I mean, I hope I didn't get in trouble. She takes a peek for me. 
He said, your kidneys are, are good. He says, you got gallstones. I ain't worried. Right now, I ain't worried about gallstones. And the doctor come in, he looked at my foot, he said, yeah, it looks good. He says, kidneys, proper shape, proper size. Uh, you got several innumerable gallstones. We'll deal with that later. So we're, we're checking out. We got, you know, checking out the forms. <coughs> I said, Doc, do I need the kidney doctor? He goes, no. I'm alive today to serve the Lord. I am alive to do Mary J. Moo's man. Yesterday was hectic. I could not do yesterday's, uh, Tuesday's Biblical Truth of Our Hymns. I didn't think I was going to get to this. I mean, I'm just having an awful week. There's a lot on me right now. Finances and widow and all that. You don't need to hear that. I'm just saying, this. today was a late start. And as I'm finishing my Bible, I'm saying, okay, I'll do... I didn't think I was going to have enough time, but I'll do Mary Tamu's Mass. And it's hot in Florida right now. I got the windows open and my my neighbors out there mowing the lawn. I'm like, oh, no. I mean, the devil's really... <coughs> Finally, he quit. As a matter of fact, he was just quitting when we started. You might have heard a long one. I'm going to tell you something. My own diabetes has almost stopped me. I know there is sin in my life right now that God's angry with me. I've confessed it and he's work, he, he dealing with me about it. But I'll tell you also something else. The devil is after me. And even my own pastor has said, the devil's, because I'm doing things like this. I am broadcasting what is not coming out of the pulpits of, of the world today. Very rare will somebody get up and do a 14 page report on why Easter is wrong for the Christian to follow. And you, you can download this one too. They're free of charge. They're not copyrighted. And what you do with them is between you and God. And then hopefully by Friday, Lord willing, I can get all these on our website. And I will post it on our on my Facebook, the website. Give me a few more days to get all of Easter and Christmas special. I have nothing to do with Easter. I have nothing to do with Christmas. I'll, I'll say it for that. I don't even call it Christmas. And if you want to put Christ back in Mass... That's the wrong Christ. Because I grew up 15, 14, 15 years in a mass that brought me to hell. I came to Jesus April 25th, 1987, and I got saved. I came out of that mess and mass to life. And as the Lord, as the Lord gives me eyes and ears and breath, and the ability of the right heart and knowledge and wisdom to understand. I am going to teach and I'm going to preach what God gives me to help Christians grow. And if Christians don't like it, I have the example of Jesus Christ. I have the example of Paul. And I have the example of all the other apostles who were mistreated, who were locked up, and who were killed for the word of God. I have been asked to leave churches. I have left churches over the King James issue. I have lost friends on Facebook because I tell the truth and try to help them. I have gotten Christians mad at me because I'm trying to help them. And all I can say is if you're mad at me for these lessons, take a number and get in line. And I'm now serving number seven. Number seven, up, up forward. Say sorry, don't make a joke out of that. It is a joke. 
is a joke that Christians can hear the truth and not do right and try to shoot the messenger as they try as they beheaded John the Baptist for his message as James was killed and Peter's in jail to be next I'm trying to help you out I love the brethren yes I'm hard I'm nasty I'm a junkyard dog I'm not sweet and innocent, I'm not lovable and cute and kind and all that. That's not how God made me. You have a problem with that? How I am, you go to God say, God, that mold, destroy it. Don't make another one like him. He did, Jeremiah. I've had a few people tell me I'm a Jeremiah. I hope I'm a Jeremiah, but one aspect. I hope the Lord will give me another wife. But they hated Jeremiah. They put him in jail. They were going to kill him. Why? Because he told them what they were doing was wrong and God was angry. You need to wake up and read the Bible. 